Welcome everyone. This is another testing video where I am testing the TEC12708, so the 8 ampere unit. And in this video, I'm going to continue my freezing test, which means that uh, we have this aluminium uh, tub here or container, which will be filled up with 100 grams of water. And uh, then I will apply some current on the device. I will apply the current which is, a cor which is corresponding to the current where I could reach the minimum cooling uh, without any kind of load. So I will apply the same current here, uh, that is something like 6 amperes, I will put the exact value somewhere here on the bottom of the screen. So I will apply that current on this device and we will see how long uh, it takes to go down to 0 degrees and I will continue the test for, for roughly one hour more and we will see how the temperatures are uh, changing. So what we have here is my regular water cooling system. So basically what you can see is that uh, under this thing we have the aluminium cooling block. I hope you can see it. And uh, I will put a thermocouple inside here so that in that channel so that will measure our hot side temperature. The Peltier cooler is in between this cooling block and the bottom of this uh, tank or container and uh, we will run it uh, through a power supply but uh, there is a slight change so yesterday I managed to complete the power meter which is this black box so this was previously a two channel thermometer with two K-type thermocouples, but now I will use it uh, for something else, so I extended it. I will probably make a video about this. I made a small power meter uh, and you can find that video, so just look at the corner and you will find it. But uh, based on that power meter and based on this already existing uh, thermometer, I combine these two. So what you will see on this screen is that I will measure the hot side and the cold side temperature. So one thermometer will be in this channel uh, touching the bottom of the aluminium cooler and another cooler or sorry another uh, thermometer will be here in the uh, container measuring the cold side temperature of the Peltier unit roughly. Of course this would be more precise if we, we could put the uh, thermometers directly on the ceramic plates but uh, it's physically not really possible at this moment. So. We will measure that and also the power supply will come in into this box somewhere here on the side and uh, it will go out on these uh, wires touching these two banana plugs. So then this uh, box will also measure the power of the Peltier cooler. Of course it is just measuring the current and the voltage uh, which is applied and then it just multiplies two values but uh, that's still useful for me and uh, the, everything is calibrated and uh, tested inside it so the values should be uh, perfect or close to perfect but uh, just for the sake of uh, safety i will uh, also measure it or to be safe or be sure about the values i will also measure it with a regular multimeter so this is one of the changes that i will have and this is our already known uh, temperature logger so basically i will use this uh, these four DS18B20 based uh, thermometers. Two of them will be in this uh, container, something like this. And uh, two of these will be distributed somewhere else. So the water tank is somewhere there and uh, it will be immersed in the water tank. So that is like indirectly measuring the hot side temperature because the hot water is coming out here, goes through this flow indicator one temperature is being measured here by this uh, metallic piece you see that's a thermometer and it will be displayed on this screen and then the water goes does a circle or half circle goes up there and goes back to the tank and after it leaves the tank it goes into the radiator the radiator uh, cools down the water inside the system and then the fresh or colder water goes through this other transparent uh, tube and goes to the aluminium cooler again to cool, cool down the hot side of the Peltier cooler. So that's what we have. So those four temperatures will appear here. Both of these loggers are 
SD card based. So I will save both data on SD cards. And after that, when I discuss all the results, uh, we will be able to discuss everything because we see the actual data and I don't have to struggle with the uh, pen and paper. So this is the tub. Of course, the tub will be surrounded by this guy here. There are two holes inlets for the thermometers and I will use a small piece of cloth to just uh, prevent any kind of uh, air leaking in or out and also I will have these other clothes to just surround these things like that so the air from the bottom will not circulate uh, around the container and that will also help us to provide better uh, insulation. And then of course, on the top of this, there will be a plexiglass just for me to see the things. So everything is basically wired up. So I just need a few minutes to finalize everything. I will fill up uh, this container with 100 grams of uh, roughly room temperature water. And uh, that's all. And then we start our experiment and see what we get. So I set up everything. Everything is running except the power supply, so that is only connected to this uh, box and hopefully it will survive the experiment. And uh, you see that both of these devices are running. So this is changing the screen at every like three seconds roughly. So one screen is showing the two thermometers and uh, the difference between the two thermometers. And the other screen is uh, showing the voltage, current, power. And then there is a small question mark here that is for me, that's the status of the screen and the logging. So this switch is now switched down, so there is no logging going on. So when I switch this up, uh, all the data will be saved on the SD card. So that will be done before I start up the power supply. And then here we have the four different sensors. Two are already connected. Uh, red will be here, that's the top of the tank and the bottom will be down here, that's the bottom of the tank or like the vertical position in it. And then we have one more, so we have a blue uh, sensor here that will go in the water tank, so I just put it in right now. And then we have the black sensor left, which is here. And that will go on the other side of the radiator, measuring the temperature of the air which leaves the uh, radiator. So now everything is set up and as I can see, uh, the water is 30.5 degrees Celsius. So I went a little bit up about the room temperature. And then the water temperature inside the tank is 28.5 as well as shown here. So I pretty much now convinced that uh, both this guy and uh, this box uses the same DS18B20 sensor because uh, I noticed in the last experiment as well that uh, this was always showing the same value as uh, this guy uh, regarding the water tank temperature. And then uh, we have 29 degrees as the air exiting the radiator. The fans still installed in push configuration, which means that the air is being pushed through the radiator by the fans and not sucked through it. That would be the pull configuration, so I'm, I'm using the push. And also there is another line on this uh, screen, of course you cannot really see it, but that is the elapsed uh, seconds uh, from the startup of the device or from the starting of the experiment. It will go back to zero when I start logging on the SD card. We also have a watch here, uh, it will just give us some indication about the elapsed uh, time. And now we all, all we have to do is just to start this device. So from the last experiment when I was measuring the unloaded uh, performance of this TEC12708, I concluded that the minimum temperature was below 20, minus 25 degrees Celsius, and that's pretty nice. And this was realized at 5.25 amperes. So what I will do here, I will apply 5.25 amperes on this unit and see how the temperatures go are going. So 
what I need to do, I need to turn on the logging first. So I want to start from the very beginning to see what happens. So performance is being logged. There is an exclamation mark and this is being logged. So I turn on the power supply and uh, turn up the voltage as long as I receive 5.25 amperes. So, I have a power meter, so that can show us the uh, real values, let's say. So I measure the power on this line, for example, or the current, 5.4, so that's a bit above it. Okay, this will be okay, 5.25 and here 5.6 so of course different uh, methods this has a sort of a transformer here and uh, it measures the magnetic field induced in or by the current uh, flowing through this uh, wire and then uh, that induces a voltage in the transformer basically and that's how you get the voltage so you transform that uh, kind of voltage into a real uh, voltage and then the voltmeter and the power meter here is a bit different. So the voltmeter is a AD converter, that's nothing fancy. But the current meter uh, has a whole effect based sensor. So basically there is a small PCB inside it and the PCB has a copper uh, wire in it, sort of. And a chip is placed over this wire and based on the current which passes through this uh, wire there is a magnetic field induced of course and this magnetic field uh, triggers uh, the sensor and then that sensor works by the principles of the Hall effect and it detects the magnetic field generated by the current passing through the wire and based on that, uh, it gives you an output voltage. So we measure that output voltage and we get the current by that. So I can also measure the voltage if we are really, really curious. Uh, I just tried to put it somewhere where you can see it maybe. Ah, okay, doesn't matter. So 12.9 according to, to this, and then 14.6 according to that, and 15.9 one according to the power supply so you can see that there are some voltage drops here and there it's probably because i don't measure the voltage at the same points where these things are measuring it so maybe the party device causes a voltage drop that's why i get different but uh, that's not our purpose now to think about that so what we see here is the delta t is already 20 degrees so 13 degrees on the cold side and uh, that's like directly measuring the cold side so that's that this thermocouple the green wire directly touches the bottom of the of the water tank so that's why we have that but uh, the water temperature on the top and the bottom of the tank is roughly 19 degrees so we are much more far away from that but this for example can show you that there is a huge gradient in the water temperatures and if you check my previous experiment you will see that there the ice froze in a funny way where the water was above the cold, cold side of the Peltier cooler uh, the water froze much quicker and where it was quite far away from the walls of the tank and uh, the cold side area let's say then uh, the water was still there and it was not frozen so there was some kind of gradient and I already explained this several times that we cannot stir the water and that's a crucial factor here but unfortunately we cannot do anything about that right now this uh, this device just doesn't allow us right now and uh, I don't really have the tools for that so let's wait uh, I don't know 10 minutes or something like that so now it's 49 so let's wait until 11 o'clock and we see what happens so we passed the 10 minute mark and uh, let's check the data that we have and we can see so let's start with the temperatures so both 
temperatures reach 1, 1 1.2 degrees uh, regarding this uh, temperature sensor on the top of the uh, tank and the bottom of the tank and then uh, the water temperature is 34.2 degrees Celsius, so that's uh, quite okay, uh, I would say. And uh, the outlet temperature of the air uh, cooler or the radiator is 33.5 degrees. So you can see that there is no big difference between the water and uh, the uh, outlet air temperature, which is quite nice. And uh, the other data. So this shows like 14.6 uh, volts and 5.5 amperes roughly. I also measured it at different points and uh, it is within the error. So for example, uh, the power supply now shows 15.08 uh, volts and 5.05 amperes. And if I measured it uh, here on the banana plugs of the Peltier cooler, then it was 5.8 three amperes and uh, 13 volts so it's a bit different because i guess of the voltage drops uh, at different points but uh, it doesn't really change our things and the power which is like fed uh, into the patio cooler is 80 watts as you can see it on the screen yeah, that's quite high so we have 80 watts power and uh, i will try to get the cooling power as well but i Think that the cooling power is relatively high because one thing that I can see is that uh, the thermocouple which is touching the same area where the cold side is attached to the tank is at 0 0.4 degrees Celsius so that area is that will start freezing no that already started to freeze I just uh, stood up to look into the tank and the water is already turbid there so this is already frozen there that's why it is 0.2. So now the freezing is uh, going on uh, on the rest of the areas. So let's wait 10 other minutes. And since I'm logging everything, I don't have to keep eye on this. So I will come back in 10 minutes and we will see what are the temperatures and how the water looks like. But what I can see and what I can tell you already right now that this cooler is much better than the previous two coolers, the 6 and the 3 amp units. And uh, that was already our experiment experience uh, when I was measuring the uh, minimum temperatures without any applied load. And the 8 amper unit was like the sweet spot because we could cool uh, enough to fight with the heat generated by the current running through this device and the the heat pumped uh, through the device of course without load there is no uh, heat pumped through it or not too much uh, but yeah this was the best uh, device among those uh, five devices that i was uh, testing previously so this looks very promising and we will see where do we get in 20 minutes so let's check back in 20 minutes or sorry in 10 minutes so let's see what happened in the past 10 minutes uh, the temperatures are still stuck around 0 degrees uh, for the two thermometers which are measuring the top and the bottom of the uh, water temperature and then according to the K-type thermocouple it is minus 1.7 degrees there which I can check by looking at it, yes I can believe that because now it is surrounded by ice that means that the water or now the ice can go down below zero degrees because the uh, crystallization has finished there is no any more latent heat in that area so therefore that area can decrease its temperature below zero degrees and that's what happens there and still we are pumping roughly 80 watts into the system and uh, that's what we can uh, say right now so now it's like half an hour roughly since i started this experiment so we will see what will happen in another 10 minutes and then maybe i will run this experiment until we reach one hour mark and we see what happens after one hour and uh, i will try to remove the ice again 
like in the last uh, experiment. I cannot promise that I will do that because maybe it gets uh, stuck to the walls of the container. But if it doesn't, then I will try to remove and we see how it looks like. So let's check the things again. And I can see that the top, so this uh, thermometer is at minus one degree Celsius and the bottom one is minus 1.5 degrees which suggests that the water is frozen around those uh, thermometers as well and uh, what all I can also see that the thermocouple shows minus 3.2 degrees Celsius and uh, that's also very nice because then the water is frozen around it and I can see it clearly that uh, there is ice around these things and the water is quiet turbid now so I can just see the water as a clear water around the less affected areas so that's what we get and you can see that the water temperature is around uh, 34 degrees and that's quite okay because uh, today is also a hot day so the room temperature is not too uh, different from that I can check the surfaces but yeah it's like 30 degrees or I change yeah this is the walls uh, temperature next to me, so 27.7 degrees. Uh, we can say that that's more or less the room temperature right now. Yeah, I just checked another wall. So yeah, it's quite hot inside, especially when these fans uh, in the corner are running and uh, removing the heat from the hot side of the patio cooler. But uh, this is what we got. I can like a little bit mess up the experiment by measuring into this uh, chamber and see what this thing sees. So uh, the K-type thermocouple which is showing the temperature here is not that wrong. Uh, minus 3.2 degrees Celsius, that was the top of the ice. Uh, so we are close. And what I will do, I will run the experiment more and we see what we got. We are roughly around 40, 40 something minutes. So let's give it uh, 20 more minutes. So I come back around 11.40 and we conclude the video. So I think I can uh, finish the experiment here. So we've been using this device for roughly an hour or something. So the K-type thermocouple, which was attached to the bottom of the tank is at minus five minus 7.5 degrees Celsius, that's pretty cold. And then also the two thermometers are below zero very nicely. So this guy here is minus 5.3, that is in the top. And in the bottom, uh, this area is at minus seven degrees, so quite cold. What I can see is there is a very, very small amount of water only in this tank. So that's pretty nice. So I think this uh, test was quite successful and we could see that uh, everything was really nice and uh, everything went pretty well. This thing is working nicely and it's not hot anywhere, not nearby the contacts. So I'm pretty satisfied with this. So what I will do now, I will go to the computer and analyze this data. So I will have another few minutes of explanation of the measurement results and we will see uh, what happened uh, with the numbers. But just before going to the computer, I tried uh, to get rid of the ice. So I could at least remove this, which means that I could remove these thermometers from the ice. Uh, but this uh, K-type thermocouple is pretty much stuck. And now I, I cannot really remove the ice because of these clamps. So that's one of our issues right now, but actually I could try removing it by unscrewing everything and the ice is removed. So let me show you. Uh, I just need a cloth. I just don't want to have water on the electronics and stuff. So this is our piece of ice. You can see that uh, it's quite solidified everywhere because it has very regular shape. And there's barely any water in this tank anymore. And uh, what we can see. So that's our thermocouple right there. 
I can still I can feel that uh, here is the letters which can be found here so that's nice uh, one hole for one thermometer and one for hole for the other thermometer so that can be the cause of the difference but it's too white everywhere but you can see that I can fit my finger here so this is like the least affected area and this is another like least affected area or less affected area so the ice could not freeze there perfectly but uh, everywhere else it is like pretty much a solid block of ice that's like impressive the previous uh, Pattier cooler was not this efficient and not this good so here, uh, this was providing us much better uh, cooling performance. So that's like really nice. So, yeah. So now I go to the computer for real. But there uh, you can see that uh, we got a nice chunk of ice. So that's what we get there. And uh, let's see what the numbers are telling us. So let's see what we measured and uh, let's see what we calculated and so on. So on this uh, chart here, on the top left uh, chart, you can see the current uh, on this y-axis and the voltage in this y-axis. And you can see that the current was quite stable and uh, of course as the system changed a little bit regarding the temperature, then at the same current uh, higher or lower voltage was needed to maintain the current. So uh, that looks uh, quite fine. So what we see from this kind of uh, reader or readings is that the voltage was around 13 uh, point something volts, especially at the end. So here, if I just uh, draw a line, this is like roughly 13 volts and then you see that 14 is here. So it was somewhere, sometimes around uh, 13, sometimes around 14, sometimes around almost 15 volts, if I, if I see. So at least in the beginning. And that's a bit strange because when I measured these things with the uh, multimeter, uh, sometimes the multimeter measured 15 volts, but then later on I measured 12.3 uh, volts so that's, that that should be somewhere here but uh, yeah so that's what we got and uh, we can see the current that was quite stable at uh, roughly 5.5 amperes and so that's that's what we get there the the black line and you could see that the measurement was running for roughly 68 minutes so it was an hour long experiment and then let's see how the temperatures uh, changed. So this curve can be familiar to you, especially this part from the previous previous experiments, because all of these curves have the same uh, kind of kink, which means that uh, there is a phase transformation or beginning of phase transformation around this area, which is roughly at 12 to 14 minutes. So the black line is the K-type uh, thermocouple here. And you can see that since that was closer to the cold side of the Peltier cooler and it was in a better contact with the bottom of the uh, water tank, then uh, that went down much quicker than the other two. And as I mentioned in another video, the K-type thermocouple is just a small piece of wire. So it's very easy to change its temperature, but these two guys here, uh, the thermometers, which are in a stainless steel capsule and also in contact with some relatively thick wires, it is much uh, dif much more difficult to change their temperature as compared to the K-type thermocouple. And then you see this exact difference here. So as you can see, uh, these guys are a bit more sluggish and uh, they don't uh, really go as quick as uh, let's say steep down here uh, as the K-type thermocouple. So you can see, but they measure roughly the same temperatures. That's uh, that's nice. It's uh, the only difference is uh, just the time. So what I saw here is there is a jump uh, in the K-type thermocouple's uh, temperature as well. So that indicates for me at least some kind of uh, change. 
and that is basically the change in the uh, change of the uh, face so that this curve is basically the thing that you can see in the in the textbooks so I just uh, try to put it here I showed this many times but uh, let's repeat it so this is the temperature in uh, Celsius and then this is just the time so basically the same thing and here let's say this is the zero degrees uh, line so what you see here is something like this so it should be something like this and what we have here is that at this point we have the super cooling so I just put an S there and uh, we reach below zero degrees a little bit and then here the freezing starts so we have liquid here and then the freezing well, while the freezing is going on we have liquid plus solid so we have still water in the system but more and more uh, ice uh, starts to nucleate and uh, basically as long as you have uh, liquid in this system you can maintain the temperature of the system at zero degrees because of the latent heat so then when uh, we run out of water here and everything is turned into ice then we just at this point and after that we just cool down the wall block of ice and that that's what happens here basically of course this is not the perfect measurement but uh, you can see that you can see pretty much the same here so first we reach the I, I show it on this clear chart so we reached super cooling somewhere here and of course the freezing also started somewhere here and uh, this is very hard to decide because the a thermometer was surrounded by different parts of the water and therefore the thermometer was not measuring the precise temperature the water was not stirred and so on but let's say somewhere here because you can see some significant uh, change in the slope uh, we finished with the freezing at least around the thermometer because you saw in the previous clip that uh, there was some little water left in the tank but here uh, freezing is uh, finished uh, let's say double F so freezing finished and then here we now just cool down the block of the ice and that makes sense because here we are at like minus 5 minus 7 degrees Celsius so that cannot be the uh, liquid water but more like the ice so th this curve is basically this curve uh, down here so this is what we see and also if we stay at this curve on the right top corner uh, we see the water and the air temperature so the top is the water, of course that's a bit more uh, warmer than the air which is coming out from the radiator. But you see that they are roughly at the same temperature. And we started around 29 uh, degrees, so I just note this down. And the water temperature was uh, maintained around 34 degrees, so that's, that's pretty nice. And just some calculations, so uh, I can calculate the heat needed to change the system's temperature by 29 degrees and this is corresponding for the water and this is corresponding for the aluminium and you can see that it's much more energy demanding to change the temperature of the water than uh, the temperature of the aluminium so that's a big big difference in the uh, specific heat of them and the final result is uh, let's say 14 kilojoule and uh, that is like 3.87 watt hours so if we uh, use my numbers so roughly 5.2 amperes and we roughly produced 30 or sorry uh, this should be 40 40 degrees uh, DT then uh, if we see this chart which is defined at 50 degrees then that suggests that the cooling power is roughly 30 watts so if we add these numbers or combine these numbers so 30 watts and we have something uh, which needs 3.87 watt hours then we conclude that this system if everything goes perfectly should be at zero degrees so we should be uh, here uh, in 7.7 .7, so 8 minutes but uh, that happens more like 14 minutes and that is due to the lack of stirring and that is due to the bad estimation of the QC why? Uh, I showed it in another experiment that uh, the hot side of these uh, Peltier coolers are most probably much hotter that we can measure 
and this was just a rough estimation uh, based on the measurements so we just measured the uh, temperature where we are at in the water and the temperature of the uh, cooling water running inside the system so that is uh, 34 degrees and let's say 0 degrees in the tank that we tried uh, to reach and uh, let's say let's round this number up to 40 so we just check these things at 40 and uh, roughly at 5.2 uh, amperes so that's where I made this black line here but that's a very bad estimation I think I think we are more close if we uh, do a line around 60 degrees and see what happens here so that is like 12 uh, watts and that makes more sense to me because actually the hot side uh, is roughly if I can believe my uh, previous experiment can be 15 to 20 degrees hotter than the hot side in reality which means that uh, we have our sandwich here so this is the water cooler so the water uh, fitting is here so let me just put the w. and then we have this is the ceramic plate and then we have the inside the electronics and then another ceramic plate of the Peltier cooler so this is the cold side this is the hot side and this is basically the semiconductors inside the two uh, ceramic plates so the hot side temperature should be measured here at this point but we are measuring it at this point or at this point which is not so good because then here there is already one uh, temperature gradient and of course another so there is a temperature drop between these points and these points here and uh, therefore this is like really really underestimated so if I say that uh, the DT is more like 60 degrees then we arrive at 12 uh, watts instead of uh, 30 watts so let's say one third of this value so this goes up uh, to let's say 22 minutes so that's more believable and then uh, yeah so we were somewhere here so uh, the QC was roughly but uh, I'm just estimating this so this is not a perfect calculation where you could re really rely on these numbers this is just my brainstorming so if we say that the QC is uh, 20 watts then uh, let's say we take we multiply this number 1.5 times uh, let's say roughly so that should be like okay let's say 12 uh, minutes and that, that, that is something that, that we can conclude that uh, the QC should be more like 20, 22 uh, watts and that is because our DT is more like between uh, 50 to 60 degrees Celsius instead of uh, 40 degrees Celsius so that's a pretty uh, significant difference but uh, that's what we got here and uh, this is what I measured so of course it can be wrong totally but uh, we will see at the end of the experiment uh, how these uh, things are lining up but uh, I can see at least as a qualitative uh, evaluation that this 8 ampere unit running at roughly 5.2 amperes were, was performing better than the previous units so that's pretty nice and I'm really looking forward to see the 10 ampere unit so I hope you learned something and I hope that this experiment was somewhat uh, useful to you and it was somewhat uh, interesting and don't forget to subscribe and like the video and if you have some questions and uh, have some comments then please leave a comment I'm glad to answer them and I'm glad to discuss everything so if you have some ideas or something we can discuss it and maybe I can uh, do that experiment or include your idea in my next experiment or, or something like that so with all of this I would like to conclude this video and see you in the next video